Once upon a time, what memories does this phrase evoke for you? Can you remember a favoured picture book from your childhood? Picture books are well known for developing language, literacy and comprehension. They're present in every infant classroom in Ireland. But picture books can also introduce every child in the, in the primary school to a range of global and justice issues. A picture book is essentially 32 pages. It's a mixture of illustrations and text working together to communicate a story. A picture book is a work of art. Barack Obama has written his own picture book called Of Thee I Sing, A Letter to My Daughters. Beautifully illustrated by Lauren Long, this inspirational book is about the potential in all of us to achieve our dreams and to pursue our paths in life. Children's literature should serve two important functions today. Firstly, it should serve as a mirror. Children should see their own lives, their own cultures, their own traditions reflected in the stories that they read. Secondly, children's literature should also serve as a window, a window to the world, a window through which children can see other cultures, other traditions, other ways of living. As we remember the passing of Nelson Mandela this week, it is challenging for teachers to communicate the story of this global icon to an audience who were not alive during the pivotal moments of his life. There are, however, a number of picture books to help teachers in this very important task. The autobiography of Nelson Mandela, The Long Walk to Freedom, has been reproduced as a picture book for children, and it's available in the 12 official languages of South Africa, including Soto, Kosa, Afrikaans, and English. Wangari Mathai, a famous Kenyan woman who won the Nobel Prize for working as an environmental um, activist, she was very concerned about levels of deforestation in Kenya and she started to plant trees. She encouraged other women and other communities to join her, and she set up the Green Belt Movement, which subsequently moved to other parts of Eastern Africa. There are a range of picture books which can be used to introduce very sophisticated development and intercultural themes to children, including racism, equality, fairness, justice, environmental issues such as climate change, and gender. Take, for example, the issue of power and powerlessness and negotiation and how these issues can be shared with children. I have an example of such a story here. It's called Click Clack Moo Cows a Type. And I'd like to read this story for you now. It's by Doreen Cronin, pictures by Betsy Lewin. Click Clack Moo Cows That Type. Farmer Brown has a problem. His cows like to type. All day long, he hears click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. At first, he couldn't believe his ears. Cows that type, impossible. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Then he couldn't believe his eyes. Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. It was bad enough the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn, but now they wanted electric blankets. No way, said Farmer Brown, no electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. Sorry, we're closed, no milk today. No milk today, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. The next day, he got another note. Dear Farmer Brown, the hens are cold too. They'd like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a new note on the barn door. Closed. No milk 
no eggs. No eggs, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard them. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, boo. Cows that strike, hens on strike. Who ever heard of such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. Farmer Brown got out his own typewriter. Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. You are cows and hens. I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. Duck was a neutral party, so he brought the ultimatum to the cows. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the farm to snoop, but none of them could understand moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for an answer. Duck knocked on the door early the next morning. He handed Farmer Brown a note. Dear Farmer Brown, we will exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn door and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the farm door and waited for Duck to come with the typewriter. The next morning he got a note. Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. We'd like a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click, clack, quack, click, clack, quack, clickety, clack, quack. And the story finishes with the duck on the diving board. So that's an interesting example of a discussion of power and a negotiation. And I have used this book with our third level students and they've created their own modern day scenarios based on the framework from this story. There are four brief points I would like to make. The government in Ireland has recently introduced a literacy and numeracy strategy. While this is very welcome, it is important for us not to interpret literacy in narrow functional terms. Literacy is a gateway to a range of geographical, historical and scientific concepts, among others. Secondly, there's a myth out there that picture books are just for young children. That is not so. Because of the complexity of the issues addressed, picture books are for every child in the primary school. Thirdly, picture books are fantastic resources for struggling readers. Children can have a great sense of achievement by finishing a book and by be being able to discuss its concepts in the class with the other readers. And fourthly, picture books are a fantastic means of developing children's visual and critical literacies. Literacies which are so important in our society today. As I conclude this presentation, I would like you to think back and reflect on the literature you read as a child. And ask yourself this question, did it serve as a mirror or as a window or as both? Thank you very much.